than me. If you got it, I got it. Then, amen. You ought to be easy to love. Praise God. Amen. I thank God. God is good. That still didn't help um, what I'm gonna preach. Praise the Lord. I feel better, but amen. It didn't do anything for that. Praise God. God is good. And, and I don't know about you, but I, I owe God everything. Uh, if it had not been for the Lord who was on my side, I don't know where I would be. Praise God. Down through the years, God's been good to me. See some stuff that you didn't see at the time. You know what I'm saying? Amen. God kept you. We'd be in prayer service, be in prayer. And you'd hear one of them old mothers start pleading the blood. Blood, 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 blood. Blood. Man, what? See no blood. They talking about. Then you get older. And amen. You get a true understanding. And so I find doing some of the same stuff that didn't make any sense. Kids off the way at college and I'd be on my knees praying. I, the blood, the blood, the blood, come on, the blood, come on, the blood. How many know that the devil can't come across the blood? Amen. And that's all they were saying. Cover, God, cover with your blood. Amen. God is, God is good. And then some of the songs that they were singing didn't make much sense to me. There was, an old, there was a little old mother on the piano. She couldn't play a lick. She'd just be over there beating. But every now and then, her name was Mother Goldie. That was her name. Mother Go Ain't that a name? Mother Goldie. She'd get up and put her hand on her hip. And she'd say, Lord, I'm running. Trying to make a hundred. Ninety-nine and a half won't do. Lord, I'm running. She'd get the ball. Yeah. 
of working, of working together. together. Say it again. The benefits, the benefits of, working of working together. together. You can be seated in the presence of the Lord. We live in a time, and I'm not going to be long on this morning. But brothers and sisters, we live in a time now where uh, by, I believe, strategic planning from the enemy that he has come to bring division to keep people, not, even, not only the people of God, but to keep people in general from working together. There was a time that even in our neighborhoods, if nothing else, they were unified. One of the benefits of even growing up in uh, the community was that it was just that. It was a community. But something changed, and I believe that it was a divine plan by the enemy, where now not only can we not get together, we certainly uh, find it difficult to work together. And it has affected uh, every facet of our lives, in our communities, in government. And I wish I could say that the church was different, but the enemy even tries to bring division amongst those that go to church. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, it, 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 it should not be that the religious community can't work together. It should not matter whether we are Baptist, Methodist, Episcopalian, uh, Apostolic, Church of God in Christ. Amen. Why? Because uh, understand this, that heaven is not going to be segregated. And if we cannot get it together down here, I'm mighty afraid that a lot of people are not going to make it up there. And there are often, there are often those that wonder, they, they, they wonder, well, Sloss, what are you? You know, uh, you don't, you're, you're really not Baptist. And, and, you know, they want to know, well, what, what, what are you? You know, uh, I, I grew up Church of God in Christ. I've been non-denominational. I've been Baptist. And so, you know, people always want to put a label on you. Well, what exactly what exactly are you? You know, when I'm around my Kojic buddies that I grew up with, well, you're not Kojic anymore, you're Baptist. When I'm with the Baptist, well, you know, you're not really all of you. Know, so what, what, what are you? Well, let me tell you what I am. I'm just, uh, let me just lay it out here and tell you what I am. I am a child of God. And see, that's, that's when, when you understand, when you understand who you are, then you're not limited by a label. Because understand something, if you are not a child of God, it does not matter, amen, what church or type of church that you went to, amen, because notice what he says, he's coming back after a church without a spot, wrinkle, blemish, or any such thing. He's not coming back for us Baptists, he's not coming back for us Church of God in Christ, us, amen, that are Episcopalian. Listen, I can't even spell Episcopalian, but you better know that you are down with Jesus, am I talking good to anybody? Amen. That's what you better not be identified with. I, I like I like how often Paul would put, and he would just say, "I'm a saint." Am I talking to any saints in here? Amen. People who have been blood bought, people who have given their life to Jesus Christ, people who have accepted Him into their heart. That's what you better be, because if you don't accept Jesus, I'm here to tell you that you can be whatever you want to be and go to hell. Did you hear what I said? Did he say hell in the pulpit? Yes, I did. Amen. You can go to hell being whatever you want to be. And the only thing that's going to differentiate you from going to heaven or hell is you have to accept Jesus Christ. And I'm here to tell you that I'm handing out invitations every day saying come and meet a man that can save you, that can deliver You do remember you stole 
Just because it's a big crowd does not mean that it's a unified crowd. And so he's talking about brothers and sisters dwelling together in unity. Unity does not require that we agree on everything. Unity does not require that we're going to see everything the same way. Oh, but what would happen if the people of God could work together for the same purpose? Amen. And what should that purpose be? The same purpose that Jesus had. He came to see and to save them that were lost. What if we work together trying to win our families, trying to win our community? What would happen if we worked together? on this street, right here in Cook. There, there are two other churches. And I, I, I personally, I reach out, personally leave notes, send messages, because I said, what if all three churches could get together? We, we three blocks apart, on the same street. If one can chase a thousand, two can put ten thousand in the fight. What if we on the arm walk from Chicago Avenue down to whatever this last street is and just knock on doors and pass out flyers saying, listen, we don't care whose church you go to, just as long as you go somewhere. What would happen if we work together? Watch this. So the writer, the writer here, the writer here says, brothers and sisters, uh, how good and how pleasant it is. Now there are, there are four points, there are four things uh, the psalmist uh, shows us. Uh, number one, it, it is, notice what he says, it is good and pleasant. Anytime brothers and sisters work together, guess what? It's good and pleasant when we do it together in unity, working together. Watch this. And you know the only way that we can work together? You can never work together unless first you learn how to pray together. Did you hear what I said? You have to pray together. Listen, brothers and sisters, and I'm, I'm so excited because the conference that we just came from, I believe God is getting ready to accelerate some things in ministry. All I can tell you, First Baptist, is get ready, get ready. We're getting ready to take the neighborhood. We're getting ready to take the city. We're getting ready to do some things, amen, in the kingdom of God. I believe it because they gave us some tools to work with. But watch this. Before anything gets done, you know what it has to be rooted and grounded in? It has to be rooted and grounded in prayer. My God, if we come together bending those knees to God, asking God, God bless our efforts because watch this, you cannot be praying together and talking about each other. Did you hear what I said? It's something about when you are praying together, watch this, don't talk about me. Touch your neighbor and say, don't talk about me. Don't talk about me. Don't talk about me. But every time you want to talk about me, I dare you to bend your knees and say, Father, I want you to help them. Yeah, I see they messed up, but God, if you help them, I see that they're not getting the mark, but God, if you help them. Listen, don't you know that prayer changes things? We talk a good game, but we don't really believe it. If you really believe that prayer changes things, you would get on your knees every time you see something out of order. Listen, there are some things that you can't fix yourself. You can't put it together yourself. But when you talk to our Father, which is God, that fits high and looks low, He can do anything except for fail. What do I do, Pastor? My children are acting crazy. Well, it's one thing to call them stupid and knucklehead, but I dare you to get on your knees and talk to your father and tell God, God, the children you gave me, they acting crazy. God, the husband you gave me, they lost his mind. If you go to God, watch God work and fix it for you. So he said, brother, how good, how pleasant it is for brother to dwell together in unity so 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 it looks good just tell your neighbor it looks good unity looks good on you Ooh. when you work together unity looks good on you it looks good anytime
how people can tell that you're unified. It looks good on you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When the choir comes in and they in their roles, because people, they don't have to wonder who you with. Looks good on you. Yeah. The ministerial alliance, we had a uh, few days ago, we had a big meeting with a lot of the big wigs from Nipsco, and they flew them in from everywhere. And we went and we all had on black suits and dark white shirts. And so when, you, when you're looking at almost 20 preachers stepping in the room, they didn't know what to do because they could tell that we were together. See, sometimes people need to see that you're together. Are y'all hear what I'm saying? Does not mean again that unity does not necessarily mean that we agree on everything. We don't have to agree on everything. Oh God, I just got a tweet from heaven. There are some stuff. Listen here. Sometimes people don't need to know what you disagree about. Some problems you have because you put your own business in the street. Okay, y'all gonna make me go there in front of visitors. Let me just be real. Keep it transparent. If you the dummy that gets on Facebook and puts all your business about what you going to out there and on Twitter and on Instagram, then a week later you got that because people talking about that's your own fault. You put your business out there. If you put it out there, it's free game for them to talk. So some things you shouldn't even tell your disagreement, but you can always tell it to God. And watch this. You can give him a tweet. You can Instagram it to him. You can get it. You don't have to get on Facebook, but you can put your book in your face in the book and talk to God. And he'll never tell anybody. He won't tell your secret. He'll hold it. People don't need to know all your, I can't, I gotta, I gotta go a little further. People don't need to know all your disagreements. Listen, sister girl, let me help you. You married, you married, you stood at the altar one day and you said, for better or for worse. And he, he said, I'll, to have and to hold. Y'all know y'all said that, that was in the, it was in the back. And then as soon as you get mad, you go and tell everybody what's going on in your own house. I'm here to tell you, what, what, what good is that going to benefit? And then all it's going to do, the more people you get in your business, the messier your business gets. Sometimes you got to draw a circle, and, and, and I know you love Mama and them, you love Mama and them, and you love Paul Paul and everybody, but Mama and Paul Paul don't have no business being in your marital affair. I don't know how I got here, and I never know, because what happens, y'all into it today, but then next week, y'all cool. But y'all may be cool, but they become their relationship and love for you. They gonna hold it against them, and so then, when he or she comes to the family reunion, you got people looking at them and you upset because now it's your fault. You put the business out there. And it doesn't bring about unity. You know, if you go into anybody with something, you need to make sure it's somebody that's going to pray about it. Somebody listen. Oh, God, I don't know why I'm here. I'm still in verse number one. If they can't, if, if they can't go have mercy, if, if they can't keep their own secrets, then why do you expect them to keep yours? I'm, I'm, I, I think y'all got, got that point. It's good for brothers to dwell together in unity. That's not necessarily mean that we're going to agree on everything. But not only, not only is it good in, in, in that regard, but watch this, watch this. Um, it says, and it is like the precious ointment upon the head that ran down upon the beard, even Aaron's beard that went down to the skirts of his garments. And what that's talking about is the anointing of God. See, uh, y'all don't think this stuff like the oil and all this is new stuff. It's not new. It, it, it's been going on forever. And they would anoint, they would anoint the priest. And what I love about it, in the priesthood, Aaron is the priest. But what I love about it, the anointing, the anointing, watch this, what is the anointing? It means to smear. It denotes the approval of God. Mm -hmm. And so the priest was anointed with oil, but the oil didn't stay. The oil 
flow. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? And watch this. That's why it's so critical to be under anointed leadership. Because if you're not under somebody who has oil on them, you probably won't get oil on you. You miss your shout to right there. But if you're under somebody that's, that's in the face of God, that's in the word of God, that's anointed by God, what I love about it is the anointing runs from the head down. Check this out. You don't have to believe me. It started at his head, but it ended up at the skirt of his garment. That means at the bottom of his garment, the oil ran. Watch this. It gets gooder. It gets good. Because not only is it an anointing, but the anointing had a fragrance on it. And what I love about it is the fragrance, amen, because it smells so good, it meant that every place that Aaron went, the people that were around him would also be able to enjoy the same sin. Lord, have mercy. That's why it's important for us to operate in unity, because you need some oil on you, so that when you go to work, people can smell the fragrance of the aroma of God in your midst, and they'll know why everybody else is cussing folk out, that if they get around you, they can smell the aroma. That's why it's important, y'all still ain't feeling me. I like how the psalmist David puts it. David says, thou anointest my head with oil. Check this out. David is a shepherd, and he knows something about sheep. Every year, they would take and anoint the sheep's head with oil, with the sap. They would anoint them because during breeding season, the male rams would just ram each other in the head to death until the stronger one lived and the weaker one died. The reason we need the anointing of God is because they anointed the sheep, and y'all do know we sheep, don't you? That amen is not going to mean that there would not be confrontation, but after they anointed the head with oil, even when they butted each other, they would slide off of each other and they wouldn't kill each other. Did you hear what I said? Somebody just throw your hands up and say, anoint me, anoint me. Now anointed my head with oil. It kept them from killing each other. It gets gooder than that. And so I better use proper English. We do that with you. It gets better, precious heart. Because not only did the anointing keep the sheep from killing each other, amen, and certain times of the year, flies would get so bad until they would drive the sheep crazy. They would go up in the nasal canal into their brain, and that's where we get the word loco. It will cause them to go loco. But they found out that the flies did not like the anointing, and it would prevent the flies from dealing with their mind. When you get real anointed in the face of God, there's something that almost drove you crazy before you came to God, but because of the anointing of God, you can lift your hand and tell the devil that ain't gonna work this year. I've been in the presence of God, anoint this my head. Is there anybody here that needs some oil? I'm asking God to anoint me the more, use me the more, God. I don't wanna just be somebody that say man say some good word. It takes the anointing to destroy the yoke. We need anointing singing. We need anointing playing. Because people get saved with the anointing of God as present. It's not time for flesh. It's not time for foolishness. We need the anointing. It's a fragrance that everybody could enjoy. And so, watch this. It flowed from the top down. It gets better. Then he says in verse number three, and I'm, it's, it's the last verse, y'all. He says, he says, as the dew of her. And the dew is, you know, that's that water that comes in the moment. As the dew of her. He said, watch what it says. It descended upon uh, the mountain of Zion. As the dew of Hermon, Hermon is a mountain. And Hermon sits higher than the mountain of Zion. So watch out. Same principle. The dew symbolizes the spirit of God. It hits Hermon first. And then it flows all the way from Hermon down to Zion. 
And so all he's trying to tell you is it don't matter whether you're at the bottom or the top. You still have the same access. Okay, so I'm going to that. Let me, let me work that a little bit because sometimes, you know, uh, it, I'll be telling my age, but I remember uh, a Reagan had a, Reagan had a, a trickle-down policy. Uh huh. In his administration, but the problem with his policy was, I don't know about you, but it never trickled down to me. But I like God because God's trickle down policy it hits everybody. Because what I love about Him is sometimes you may be high in your spirit and you may be on how on Mount Hermon, but Amen. Don't get too high when you're on Mount Hermon because Amen. In this walk, you will be on the mountain sometimes, but sometimes you will be in the valley. And what He's trying to tell you is it really doesn't matter if you're on the mountain or on the valley if we operate in unity that the and the Spirit of God is going to flow, amen, no matter where you are. See, there are some things that hinder the flow of God. Jealousy, mm -hmm, that hinders the flow. Amen, backbiting and talking about each other, yeah, that hinders the flow. Oh, but when we work together in unity, it releases the floodgates of heaven, and amen, God can do some things. And watch this, I love it because one of the psalmists puts that says in Isaiah, when the enemy comes in like a flood, the Spirit of God will lift up a standard against him, but it's not written that way in the Hebrew. In the Hebrew, the comma is changed. When the enemy comes in, comma, like a flood, the Lord will lift up a standard against him. You do know what happens when a flood comes, don't you? Everything that's caught in the wave of the flood gets moved out of the way. The psalmist said, God jump out upon the flood. So let's backtrack and put this thing together. When the enemy comes in, comma, like a flood, the flood that God is sitting on and the stuff that's bothering you and going on in your life, he can release the flood and your enemies will be washed on out the way. See, sometimes you just gotta know who you are and who you are and tell the devil, listen, devil, I don't care if people don't like me. I don't care if they don't understand me. I Shall pass 
pass away. But my word is going to stand forever. And I don't know about you, but you know where I'm standing? I'm standing on the word. And every promise belongs to me. Listen, you got to learn how to speak the word in your own life. Because watch it. It's good to work together. Amen. But watch this. You got another ally on your team. You don't know who he is, don't you? You got a big brother called Jesus. And listen, the death couldn't stop it. The grave couldn't hold it. He's on your side. So even if it's just you and him, you own the winning team. So you just got to start walking around and speaking what he's supposed to. Deposited something in you that I need. 
that he's depositing something in me that you need. I need you to survive. Did you hear what I said? We need each other. Let's rest on our feet and we're going to pray. I don't know what you stand in need of today. It is his that every need be supplied. Every head bowed, every eye closed. The doors of the church are open. If you're here today and you don't know Christ as your personal Savior, if you take one step, my brother, my sister, God will take two. He says, Come unto me, all ye that heavy laden, and I will give you rest. You've tried everything else. There's always an emptiness there. There's a place in man. There's a place that only God can fulfill. Is there one today? I dare you to give God a chance. You've tried the rest. Now try the best. Some of us have been as high as anybody. Have been as drunk as drunk could be but there's a satisfaction when you come to God and give him your life the best high you could ever get is being filled with the Holy Ghost is there one today you can come by letting Christian experience or water baptism you the part I need you to Survive. Is there one? Or maybe you're here and you say, well, Pastor, I know the Lord. But I want a good church home. If that's you, you can come. If that's you, you can come. A place where you can grow. A place where you can learn. If that's you, you can come. Thank you. 
you for what you're doing. I thank you for what you've done. So God, I thank you for what you're getting ready to do. What the enemy meant for that, you're going to work it for our good. And God, we decree it right now. We're your people. We belong to you. Oh, and we lift our eyes to the hills from which comes our help. Our help, it comes from you. The lover of our soul. You're our way maker. You're our way out of nowhere. You're our bread when we're hungry. You're our water when we're thirsty. God, you see and you know right now. And I give it to you, Lord. I give it to you, God. I give it to you, God. And I give it to you, God. Thank you. 